Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming down. Um, I'll certainly use the, the microphone. Can, can you tell us who's here? What gifts students in your schools? Are you at South School, at Wilkins, at Anson? Can you give us a sense of, of, of who's here? Just so we can tell all the marks a little bit. Soton Residence. Soton Residence, awesome. Welcome so much. Really appreciate you coming down. Um, my name is Tom Rand, I'm the superintendent. I'm joined by the project team. Uh, Vertex is our honors project manager. And um, we are also joined by Joyce Hussaini, our main supervisor, who's here and is really working closely on the project as well. And DRA is our designer, and they'll be presenting. So just a little bit of background on how we got here. Um, there was an ADA committee working here in Soton from 2003 to 2009. And they addressed ADA upgrades in all of the buildings. And all the buildings at that time, at some level, door frame, door openers, restrooms, elevators, or countertop work, with the exception of the South Street. So it was understood that there was really no feasible construction alternative or no way to remedy the ADA issues in the South. And so they were grandfathered, even at that time, and now we're in a position where we have to move forward. So that's really some of the background. Um, we had a facilities plan, but to 2017, we updated in 2021, and we even updated again in 2023. You can find that online, and you can take a look at the facilities master plan. But it puts the South right at the top of the list of schools that need to be replaced. And I think if anybody has visited, you certainly know that that school is, it needs to be replaced. We submitted statements of interest about now, seven or eight years ago, in 2014, for the high school and the South. Obviously, we did high school first, did a beautiful building here, and now the South is next. The one thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we do a lot of focus on the South, but we're also committed to all of the elementary schools. And so one of the things that we've worked on is making sure that we keep all of the elementary schools upgraded. And so we have uh, dual entry vestibules slated for both the Gibbons and the Dog. We have new cameras for all five elementary schools, including the South, and we'll just repurpose those in the South. Um, we have uh, new security work being done at this annual town meeting. So we're committed to all five of our elementary schools and making sure that we're keeping them, we're keeping them current. Uh, TJ, did you want to say a few words? Here. Okay. Did you want to say a few words of introduction? I just want to give you a chance to... I'm, I'm fine, actually. Okay. TJ Rupert was the chair of the school building committee. And he's been working very closely. And he was the chair of the high school building committee, so he's an awful lot of experience doing this. And we're thrilled to have him back as the chair of the school building committee. So, um, who's next? Okay, Carl. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Um, unfortunately, uh, Don Tiberi from Vertex uh, uh, can't be with us this morning. I'll take uh, his portion of the presentation, but they're doing a, a great job keeping us on track. Um, schedule-wise, so I want to share a little bit um, of the schedule with you uh, in this fashion here. You can see, we're, whoops, there we are, sorry. Um, we're, we're right at this point here. This PDP stands for Preliminary Design Program. That's one of the steps uh, in the process with the School Building Authority of the state. They're, they're our partners, by the way. Um, as you may know, the state reimburses a significant portion of the cost of these schools, uh, school props. And, and um, uh, they do have a, a so prescribed program uh, of submittals so they can review the progress and, and uh, the procedures and so forth. So next week we'll be submitting that. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. But uh, what's coming up um, that's very important here is, is this preferred schematic PSR. That, that's when we actually um, winnow down the, the options from, from about 10 or 11 options that we're looking at right now for this project down to one preferred option. And that will happen this spring and be submitted in June. So that's a very important step. Um, and then downstream of that, once that's approved, um, we would work on um, the schematic design uh, phase and, and bringing the, the plans and, and specifications up to a level of detail that we can get a very good cost estimate. And at that point, we share that with the town and, and calculate the reimbursement and so forth. And next, next year's town meeting would be the town meeting that uh, reviews and approves the project locally. So, um, and, and more specifically, just to focus on the, the next couple months here, as we said, the, the, um, 
the preliminary design uh, program, uh, the first step, uh, it, which is going in next week, basically has three components to it. It evaluates the existing conditions at the South Elementary School. It considers, um, you, you know, the repairs and, and, and so forth necessary to bring that uh, building up to present-day codes and, and standards. Then we also worked on, uh, with the, the uh, school principals, both at South and Wilkins, worked on the educational plan for whatever this project might be. So before we design anything, we think about how does teaching and learning want to happen in all the elementary schools. And so, and this project is sort of, you might think of it as the first to implement, um, but the other schools, to the extent they can, would also be um, thinking about that as well. So there's the education plan, the existing conditions, and then the third aspect is developing preliminary options, looking at everything from um, other sites for the, uh, the South uh, School, um, to looking at additional renovation options, or replacing the building with all new construction, or possibly consolidating and having Stoughton go from five elementary schools to four. And, and uh, you know, what, what implications does that have, and where could that new school be, be located? So you'll hear us refer to this project as the, the new elementary school, because it, it may be a replacement for the South, or it may be uh, a new larger school, it might still be called the South in the end, but we, we don't want to confuse folks. Um, we think it's better to refer to it as the new elementary school. Um, and then, uh, as we said, we, we we're narrowing the options. If you see that cursor there from 11 options down to five or so that we'll continue to look at um, for both the smaller replacement size school and the larger consolidated size school in, in the next couple months. And then in June, we hope to take the, the, the two design options down to the one preferred option. And in the end, the school committee will weigh in on, on which enrollment uh, option they, they would like the, the town to go in. And we'll be submitting that to, to the state, as we say, in June. They have a board meeting in August when it would get approved and we move to the, to the next um, step in the process. Sorry, before you move on. Sure. So that vote up there that said vote down to, to vote for an option, yes. that's the school committee. That's the school committee's vote. The town will be voting um, like 10 months from now or so next spring, uh, a year from now. So um, that vote is the school committee deciding on restricting versus just rebuilding. Exactly, exactly. So it's a very important milestone in the project and that's why one reason we're having this meeting today is to, is to start to um, raise awareness uh, about this, and, and there will be future community meetings, too. So, um, as I mentioned, just to recap, what's going in next week is, is this so-called preliminary design program to the state. This is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, that's MSBA, you'll hear that acronym often here. Um, and those are the three components to it. And as we said, we, we've already had several community meetings. We, we had um, one in South, we had one in Wilkins, uh, we've had a couple now, and we've had a couple virtual ones, and we will continue to do this on a regular basis. We, uh, I'm sure as the word gets out, um, uh, there will be more interest, more questions, and, and so forth uh, that we'll want to follow up on. Um, and just to recap quickly, for those who haven't been inside the South School, perhaps, it, it is uh, a building in need of attention. Um, everything from, from, you know, code issues like there are some uh, very steep uh, ramps from, from 50 years ago that are, are nowhere near um, code compliant nowadays, but also the, the um, basic systems, the electrical system, the ventilation, heating, um, all need to be replaced. They're at the end of their useful life. The building envelope, the windows, the insulation, uh, again, nowhere near today's code. Um, so it, it would take some serious rework of that building to bring it up to standards. Um, there. Um, and then the site itself, if any of you have been by there at pick up or drop off time, it, it's kind of a traffic nightmare. It's a very limited circulation area. There's not really good separation of buses and cars and pedestrians. Um, certainly um, needs, in, needs improvement from that aspect as well. And then just to sort of share with you, or I guess uh, sort of tease your imagination um, with with what exists today at South and what could be, just some samples from, from other projects. In terms of cafeterias, 
um, which also function as auditoriums for, for elementary school. Um, hallways nowadays, too, are not just places to you know, hang up your coat or pass between classes. We try to actually get you know, usable, ex what might be called extended learning space out of hallways uh, these days. Um, with you know, just, just um, sort of alcoves or building in benches and, and so forth. And in a typical classroom, too, these days, we still appreciate the natural light that's at South, but there's also um, a need for classrooms to be a bit larger than those at, at currently at, at South. There are more different activities that, ha that happen in an elementary school classroom. So we want to reflect that um, in, in the project. Um, so here again, the, those sort of breakout areas, there, there are more opportunities for for um, collaborative work or small group work in, in schools these days. It's not just a teacher standing at the head of the class lecturing in kids. Um, and, and we want the buildings to accommodate that. The gymnasium itself is not only small, but it's shared with the art program. And it's a, a, you know, a really substandard sort of condition there that requires a lot of setup and breakdown in order to have those two functions going on in the same space. And what's really you know, current, in, in an, even in an elementary school, is um, the gym should be large enough for a full-size basketball court, so they could be used by the community uh, after hours and so forth. And that's certainly possible in, in this project. The library itself is very small. Um, they do their best, you know, trying to maintain a variety of materials and resources, but again, the, the space could be larger, brighter, more of a, um, a heart of the school. That's one of the, the aspects of the of the educational program that, that was highlighted. And even outdoors, too, we, we like to think that learning can happen everywhere um, on a school campus. It, within the building, outside the building, we learned a lot from COVID about taking advantage of the outdoors. Um, and, and it can also um, uh, support sustainability initiatives and, and so forth. Um, and if it's designed kind of intentionally with some gathering spaces, not just you know, taking advantage of the paid fire lane and calling that a play space. Um, there, there's a lot of opportunities outside the walls of the building that, that we would explore in, in a project. Again, whether it was an addition or renovation or, or a new school. And just to touch on the education plan, I, I guess I won't make, you want to come up, Katie, and explain it? That would be the, the better since you're the author of it. Thanks. And Jay, sorry. Yeah, so like Carl had mentioned, we spent a great deal of time drafting what's called the education plan. And it ended up being about a 73-page document that outlines the vision for what we feel elementary education in Stoughton should be, considering that we're in the 21st century. We considered the plans from different districts as a guide, as well as that that Julie Miller wrote for the school that we're in right now, to kind of help us as we drafted that document. We also looked to the different department heads within the school district because we wanted to make sure that we encompassed their exact vision for the spaces that their programs are utilizing. So we talked to physical education, art, music, technology, facilities, and we really kind of dug deep into those different areas to make sure that what they thought would be appropriate, we included in the draft. So it's important to know also that this ed plan is appropriate for whatever of the three options the town decides to go with. And that's, that's really important to consider. So it was written so that what would be appropriate for a larger school would also be appropriate if it's decided that just the self was rebuilt. Jake's going to talk a little bit about some of the different things that are in the visioning section of the document. And these are what you would imagine those pictures looking like. That's what we were considering when we wrote that visioning section. So again, yeah, I'm Jake Jordan, Principal of the South. Um, so we spent a lot of time talking about the different groups of the visioning, what was important to the community, what was important to our schools. And so as we went through, we had five like, major areas that we wanted to highlight. And this was the fun part for us. This is the part we get to really think about what's the best possibilities for these new schools. Um, so the biggest thing that we heard was having an upper and lower school with what we call uh, neighborhoods. So you would go in your grade level neighborhood and everything that you need would be in that neighborhood. Your special education teacher, your resources, your locker, everything that you could possibly need is in your neighborhood clustered together, your breakout spaces. And then the idea that the school would be divided between what was educationally appropriate, having K to two in one area, three to five in another area. 
we as principals have seen that is a great way to model education, whether that be by floors or by areas of the school. Um, second was the utilization of outdoor space. Um, this idea of the building as a teacher, the South School, I affectionately call the school in the woods, because it is, it is completely surrounded by the woods, it is a beautiful location, the community loves the idea that you can go and explore the outdoor areas, it's surrounded by trees, they wanted to bring that idea to the new building, have those outdoor spaces, just, not just for learning, but also for play that's appropriate for all students. Um, also, the idea of bringing the natural light into the classrooms, right? Right now, it's really limited in all of those pictures you saw. Beautiful light comes in where you don't even really need classroom lighting. Um, we also wanted to focus on the building community areas um, and have those areas be able to be cut off from the rest of the school so that you could host community events. You could host after-hours basketball or a, a theater performance or musical performance and not have to get walk through the entire school to get those locations. So the whole community would benefit from something like that in a new building, whether a replacement or a larger building. Um, also having lots of authentic collaboration and meeting spaces. So something that the Wilkins in the South do not have now are those places. There are no rooms for special education meetings. There are no rooms for professional development. There are, are not a lot of spaces for a lot of gathering and educational conversations, both with students and also with parents and community members. So that's something that's a large portion of the plan as well. Um, and then the last um, was with 21st century learning, STEM is a huge focus of schools. And so to be able to have a STEM lab, be able to have appropriate spaces like a learning commons where we can really push students' learning to the next level uh, and not retrofit spaces to try to do 21st century learning in not 21st century spaces. Thanks. Thanks. Can I ask a question? Yep. You mentioned special ed like throughout there, but yep. um, just wondering if there's if you can speak more into kind of what's in your seventy three pages about special ed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure, yeah. And then, uh, so I mean we we both spent a lot of time thinking about special education. One, not only is there appropriate spaces for all the service providers that come into schools now. Um, being able to house all of those people in one school at the same time, that's not currently a possibility. Being able to run upper and lower grade level special education meetings at the same time in different locations. Um, yeah, and I think a large part of what we were considering when we were drafting this document was the confidentiality aspect of having a student with special needs needing to work with them. Right now, in our schools, it's really challenging to find a space where a student can be worked, on, worked with and provided services to because we just lack a lot of those spaces. So what you find is a private alcove in the hall right now, and that's not ideal, as you, I'm sure you know. Another consideration that we, we looked at was the program that's currently in the South School of Mr. Gore's building, which is a language-based program. And while that is the fantastic program that's running quite effectively right now, we looked at what could we do to actually provide perhaps an expansion to that program so that more students might be able to access that. We also looked at the different inclusion services that we both currently have for students that are included in general ed, ed most of the time, and what that would look like for them to be able to access the general curriculum in a school that is just better outfitted for 21st century learning. So, that when you start to draft all that out and think about that comprehensively, it, it, it's actually highlighted the, the dire need that both of our buildings have right now to be updated. Yeah, I think the last thing that we did that we had to spend a lot of time on was forecasting out what the needs would look like in both a single school replacement but also the spaces and needs in a larger building as well. So, because it might have just been a background up there, it didn't like say sub separate. But do, I know some, the Hanson and the Daw have sub-separate programs, do the Wilkins and... So the South has a sub-separate program. Has a sub-separate for language? Yeah. yeah. We do not have one right now. Okay. So would, is part of redistricting, would the sub-separate programs also be redistricted, or is that kind of... I think in this plan at this time, it is just based on the language-based program moving to a, either a replacement building or a new building yeah. um, at this time. Okay. Yeah, we were looking to try to be as least disruptive as possible right. in transitioning students, and the way to do that was to just focus on the program that was already currently at the South. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. Um, and this sort of 
flows out of their education plan, what, what they've written, sort of a narrative is the, you might say the qualitative description of the education plan, and then we translate it into the quantitative, listing all the spaces that would, would be in this, um, you know, theoretical school, again, before designing anything. Um, and, and this too will go into the state for their review. But for instance, in special ed, we will, you know, look at more specifically how many spaces, what size spaces, uh, sub-separate or resource rooms or tutorial spaces are all listed there. This is just a very condensed version. There are about a hundred lines to this spreadsheet um, for the future. just want to uh, make a point that this is being done both for the smaller enrollment and the larger enrollment. Um, and in each case, we, we still, you know, customize the, the number of classrooms to, to meet the ed program, which calls for these classroom neighborhoods the special ed programs, which would still be incorporated in, in a replacement school or a larger school. So, uh, and, and this is kind of a working document. It will keep evolving um, up until uh, the end of schematic design when, when we finalize all of the spaces and, and sort of reach agreement with the state. One of the things we want to mention there, you might have seen the numbers um, tossed about, the smaller schools talked about as a design enrollment of 225 students as the replacement to the South School. And the consolidated school is talked about as 515. Those are, those are design enrollment numbers, um, which is the way the state looks at it. But really, the capacity um, is larger than that in, in these buildings. So we would say that the, the larger school, the capacity is closer to 600 students. And for the smaller school, the capacity is closer to 280 to 300 students, um, which is more akin to what the, the South School enrollment currently has. Yes, there's a question. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to know about the numbers that you use to determine the budget. So is it the gross floor area? Is there a factor? I it, it is. A factor number 1.5? Is that a multiplier against the... Yeah, the way, the way this program works, the software, which is a state form, you add up all the net areas of the building. You know, an office, if it's 10 foot by 15 foot, is 150 square feet inside the walls. Then you get a tally of all the net spaces, classrooms and so forth. And then there is a factor of 1.5 to get to the gross area of the building, which includes corridors, uh, bathrooms, uh, stairways, mechanical spaces, things that are not educational. So in this spaces. example, the 95, 290 is based on a factor of one it, 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 it is. It is. And that 1.5 is, is also the prescribed multiplier to get from that to gross. Yeah, so I'm, so. I'm, I'm trying to get to the order of magnitude number, so I just want to know if we have the square footage of each design. We do. Um, that, that, that's the first one. Uh, that's the, the larger one there, uh, 95, and the other one is 64,000. 95 and 64. Those are the gross square foot uh, numbers, again, on a sort of a conceptual level at this point. As we get into more design, that may shrink a little bit if we can design it tighter than that. You know, our goal is always to meet the net, you know, requirements, the net square footage of every space. If we can be efficient, sometimes that number comes down so a little bit. Roughly then all the placement options are in the 64 range and all of the consolidated number. Exactly, exactly. When we show you options here, which is sort of nice, um, uh, we'll, we'll be comparing apples and apples on, on all those. I'll, I'll point that out. But we started, as we said, looking at options, casting a very wide net in the town, saying, you're not assuming that, that the project would be located only, you know, exclusively on the south uh, current site. Maybe there are other parcels that the town owns or are available. And we started with, with you know, some what, 13 or 14 options there, but it really came down to uh, the only viable, feasible options were the current south site and, and its associated play fields and what's called the line lumber site, which has some frontage on Park Street nearby, not exactly abutting um, the, the current uh, south property, but it is a, a town uh, parcel, that is a, a consolidation of three parcels that the town acquired back in the 60s for school purposes. So back then they were looking forward um, and thinking about you know future needs, and, and uh, but the site has remained undeveloped since that time. It is it is a wooded wooded site, and there is this paper street um, here, 
uh, it's not officially, it's not paved, and it's not um, you know, an accepted street, but the, the parcel itself has, has frontage on Park Street. That would be the entrance to that. And, and we'll show how that works here in a moment. So to get from, from you know, the multiple number of site options to the, the um, you know, uh, different size enrollments, a replacement size school or a larger consolidated size school, you know, there's certain choices there. There's the choices, is it, is it all new construction or is it additional renovation? And then the variety of sites. There's sort of a multiple number of decisions that have to be made. As we pointed out, this, this first decision about consolidation versus replacement size needs to be, that decision needs to be made this spring so we can focus on one preferred option going forward. Um, and the way that we'll uh, evaluate those options it is sort of in this matrix form. I know we, we sort of intentionally um, made this so you can't read it because it is preliminary, but we list all the, the options um, that we're considering down the left-hand side, and, and we kind of list the pros and cons right now as to, you know, what are the advantages or, or disadvantages of each option that we're considering so that we can narrow, narrow the list. And here are the options right now. Again, these are preliminary. And, and are being submitted to the state, and then we will develop them more in, in the next couple of months. So there's what's called the base repair, which is that first evaluation that I mentioned of the existing building. Without changing it educationally at all, how much work would it take, how much would it cost to just fix what's deficient and bring it up to speed, uh, to current standards, so so-called base repair. Then we do have a couple additional renovation options, of adding on to the existing South School, both to um, address you know, just the replacement size program or a larger program of uh, <coughs> consolidating um, two schools, uh, reducing the, the uh, total number of schools from five to four for the town. And then there are um, four different design options for new construction uh, on, on essentially two different sites. This, this one here is the let's call it the consolidated site of the existing South Elementary School. Ash Street is here, that driveway in the front is right there, the existing building sits right there. This proposes building a new school behind the existing building, kind of where the play fields are now. It's a very sloping site for those familiar with it, that, that has certain constraints. It also has um, some cross-country you know, power lines going through there too that, that we really can't um, uh, uh, alter. Um, that we need to respect as well, but it does propose um, a three-level building there that, that houses um, either enrollment, the, the smaller or, or larger. And then once the new school is built, the, the strategy would be to demolish the existing building and replace it with uh, drop-off areas, parking, and, and some uh, playgrounds, uh, both grass and, and paved. And then these other three options are all um, for the line lumber site with that frontage on Park Street with a new driveway coming in and then developing a building. Uh, and you can see there are three different configurations being thought about for the, for the new school. And you, you might be able to see that it's a, it's a larger site in that we can get a, a, you know, a larger play field, we can get a little league size uh, baseball diamond there uh, in addition to some paved play areas and outdoor areas immediately adjacent to the building in, in any of these options. So really there are three design options times two enrollments, so that's really representing six different options there. So when, when we sort of put them together, we end up with 11 total options. And here's a, a bit larger so that you can see um, the, the site plans. This is the existing condition here with, with that driveway, a little bit of parking here, some parking adjacent to the school. There's, there's basically two wings in that that kind of uh, connector piece connecting the upper and lower wings of the school, uh, kind of limited outdoor play areas and limited outdoor grass play areas as well. So the first uh, replacement size um, option suggests adding on to the rear of the building with a new gym and uh, additional classrooms and a new library. Those, those two large spaces are really the ones that are most significantly undersized in the school and then we can repurpose the, those spaces on the inside. We'll show you the floor plan in a minute. And if we were to go with a larger enrollment in an addition op, um, uh, renovation option, it, the, the new construction would get that much larger 
we would still be fully renovating the existing building and trying as best we could to improve the circulation and parking here, although it is severely limited. We just have that frontage on Ash Street, and, and as it comes around, um, I believe this is Cedar Street, is that right? Cedar Street here. Um, uh, that's the limited frontage that that property has, unfortunately, um, there, which makes it difficult. We do propose putting a median in, trying to widen the driveway to separate bus drop off from, from cars or, or pedestrians to make it a bit safer, but there are certainly challenges um, uh, on that site with an addition renovation. So to, just to see it, um, uh, when we look at it before and after, here, here are the, the floor plans. So the, the brighter colors here are the new construction for the replacement size building. So there's the new gym that allows us to repurpose the existing gym into art and music spaces. We, we fully renovate the entire building, creating, trying to create those classroom neighborhoods that the education plan talks about with some breakout areas where the, the hallway gets widened and, and classrooms are kind of joined together. In this case, three classrooms per grade uh, there. And, and the way we improve the accessibility is with a few new ramps, um, a, a new elevator, a uh, chair lift, and, and the fact that we can connect the upper and lower wing, this actually becomes a two-story addition. If we were to come across at, at this upper elevation, this part of the, of the um, new construction is actually two stories with an elevator and stair. And, and that same strategy applies with the larger enrollment. It, it just obviously we need more classrooms. We still have the, the larger gym, we still have the library learning commons, and then the bridge in, in the middle. Uh, but now each of these classroom neighborhoods is five classrooms um, with supporting spaces, special ed spaces, uh, boys and girls rooms, um, and, and so forth. And we still convert the old gym uh, into art and music. Fortunately, the Catholic Florium is large enough. Um, there need to be some rework, obviously, in the kitchen. And, and again, a very extensive renovation of the entire building, basically taking it down to the structure, doing all new enclosure, all new systems, electrical, mechanical, uh, fire protection sprinklers, and, and so forth. And then these are the, the four new construction options. Each, you can see, is, is kind of a different configuration of the building, trying to um, interpret that education plan in slightly different ways that we will evaluate in, in the coming months here. Um, but we just wanted to, to give the town um, you know, sufficient variety of options to consider the, the pros and cons to each of these. And because of their shape, um, we do you know, sort of number them, but we also call them by these names because that reflects the, the, um, the, the shape of the option. So just to share with you um, what's called a pinwheel, but just because of the way the corridors pinwheel off of the central learning commons. So as, as the principals talked about here, they really value the idea that each grade is a separate classroom neighborhood. Um, and so this certainly does that. Each wing of this building is a separate grade. Um, and it is a three-story building. So there's kindergarten and first grade um, on the first floor, then second and third, then uh, fourth and fifth on each successive floor. So as you sort of move through elementary school, you rise up in, in the building. Um, but the learning commons remains in, in the center, access from those, those wings. And the public side, you might say that the cafetorium and the, and the gym are on its own wing, and where the rest of the school could be closed off and there could be a dedicated entrance in, into those spaces. Again, the site work on a preliminary basis, we have very adequate um, you know, driveways for stacking of cars, separate buses from cars drop off, um, and then you know, um, uh, sufficient land to develop some grass play areas uh, there and then immediately adjacent to the building, there's some uh, outdoor areas that could be those extended learning areas as well as play areas. And again, they could be separated by age groups. So this might be the kindergarten play, this might be the older children's play uh, on the outside of the building. Um, then the second referred to as the arc because it has sort of this curving um, main street corridor again with the classroom neighborhoods coming off of it. In this case, there are three classroom neighborhoods per floor. So this is a two-story building. So on the first floor is K, one, and two, and then on the uh, second floor is uh, three, four, and five. So th that sort of, again, physically embodies the, the desired separation that the education plan talks about. 
uh, along this main street would be the learning commons, um, kind of in the center of the building, and then at the end would be the gym and the cafeteria, again with a dedicated entrance, um, separate drop-offs once again, and then green playing field areas, and then between these, these sort of courtyards, the, the, the center ones would probably be more uh, passive, uh, maybe outdoor classrooms kind of uh, space, and the end ones might be more active, uh, paved and, and play structures on, on the ends of the building. So uh, it has some potential there as well. And then the third new construction on this site is, is a T um, building, T shape. Uh, again, where we separate the lower grades from the upper grades on each side of the building. So this literally is K and one on this side and a one story building. And then on this side is two and three and then four and five on the second floor. So this half of the building is two stories. This is one story. In the center is two stories with common spaces of admin, library, music, and art. And then the, the sort of rear leg of the T is the cafetorium and gymnasium. Again, with a dedicated entrance, separate car and bus drop off. Um, and outdoor play areas, again, defined by, by kind of the shape of the building. So uh, kindergarten play area could be on one side, older children uh, on the other side. And then this is the, the fourth solution, um, referred to as more compact plan, um, basically driven by the topography of the site. Because it's so sloping, in order to get a building to fit on there, it needs to be a little bit more linear. Um, so in this case, we actually kind of put the gym on an interior space and then have the classroom neighborhoods as sort of saddlebags on each side of the gym, you might say, uh, there. So in, in this option, there are three levels to the building, although the first level is kind of a half level dug into the hillside using the wall of the gym as a retaining wall because of the way the ground, <coughs> the ground slopes. Um, so there is a, a sort of lower entrance here off the car drop off for kindergarten and first grade. And then at the middle level, um, there'd be a, sort of the main entrance of the building by the administration area. And, and that would have um, three more uh, uh, or two more classroom neighborhoods. And then there'd be a third upper level around the gym here as well um, with the fourth and fifth grade. And like we mentioned, once the, exist once the new school is in operation, the existing school can be removed. Um, new driveways and drop-offs created. Again, dealing with that sloping topography, there have to be some, some retaining walls and earthwork. There'd be some room for some black grass play fields um, and some additional parking closer to the building in addition to that existing parking that, that exists. So that's the, the so-called compact plan number four. And for each of these, they, the same design strategy would work for the smaller enrollment versus the larger. We, we've just reduced the number of classrooms in each classroom neighborhood from five down to three. Uh, but the configuration, the number of stories would, would remain the same. So there they are in, in sort of comparison, the new construction options. You can see there's you know, a classroom neighborhood with five general classrooms, some special ed space, some smaller special ed spaces, shared teacher's room, and, and so forth. Um, you know, in this option, that's obviously a classroom neighborhood. In this option, there's classroom neighborhood on each side of the building, kind of shared collaborative areas and teachers' areas in the center. And in this option, there's a classroom neighborhood on each side of the gym here uh, as well. So that's how those planes work. Um, and again, you can see they're very conceptual at this point. Um, in, in the coming weeks and, and months, we, we will develop these further, again, based on feedback. Um, from the building committee, from, from the users, and, and from the community. Um, so there's a total of, of 11 options, as we said, uh, because each of these new construction options do have two variations to them for both the replacement and consolidated uh, size program. So we, we did want to touch on the topic of redistricting, although there's really nothing to report you know, from, a, from a, a, a specific option point of view at this time. But if the larger enrollment sorry, were chosen. You, sorry, I'm sorry. To yes. <laughs> On the um, building design, yes. just given the climate in this country mm -hmm. right now, is there, and maybe this is a question for the building, um, is there a certain requirement or guidance That, that, we'll, we'll talk about uh, how we'll evaluate these options. 
we'll, we'll develop a, a list that we have already preliminary, develop a list of criteria. And certainly, safety, security, access, um, flow of, of circulation it is a criteria that we would evaluate each option and see some might be inherently safer than others, the perception uh, or the actuality. But that's and definitely the school a, a board will have that and they go to vote on which option. What's that? The school board will have that, the school committee will have that and they go to vote on which option. The, the sequence will be um, uh, the school building committee first will help evaluate the design options, present both two options, the smaller and larger, for the school committee to make their choice. That's the, and since that's moreover an educational issue, not just a physical you know, facility issue, that's a school committee's purview. TJ, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, we, so with this building, um, we were deciding these things right after one of the tragic national events. And DRA and, and our design team went back and we added, I think, about half a million dollars worth of security upgrades in this school just for that purpose. So I, I could say just for my own part and the design team and project team that we're abundantly aware of what's going on around nationally. And when it comes to designing whatever we come up with for a, whether it be consolidated or a single replacement, it would be You'll never know about it, by the way, yeah, because sure. <laughs> actually all of the discussions of the security components were all in executive sessions, so people don't know about them, but I guarantee you they'll be in part of the process. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Okay, Carl, I think so. In the ed plan itself, it talks about like just the upgrades for security in a new building because yeah. they need to exist. Yeah. And so well, there's a lot of different collaborators who worked on that plan to make sure like all of those things from a, the school perspective were the best things that we could possibly put in. And then like as building principals, we work with the central office and uh, other other town personnel to make sure like our plan, it's really about our planning too for the yeah. building yeah. Um, and making sure that those things make so sense. So that'll be, and we sit on the, on the, on the committee. So we'll have it put as well. We, we did want to mention, as you said, even though redistricting, um, nothing final has, has been decided certainly, um, we have been gathering data on, on where families are located, what the enrollments are at the existing schools, what the capacities are of the existing schools, and thinking about what are the issues involved if that option should be selected, um, and, and how um, uh, decisions will get made. So um, we have identified, um, you know, that there are certain levels of, of impacts with going from five schools to four. Um, the, the one thing that has been decided, you might say, in terms of consideration here is that the, the um, where's my, where's the, oh, there it is, um, there's the, the current south um, district, it, is this the, the school that would be consolidated with the south, if that were chosen, is the Wilkins. Um, so that's the, the current thinking. But again, the decision hasn't been made, but we do want to think about um, uh, the impact at the various levels that that kind of decision would make, the, the pros and the cons. Um, there are certain district-wide impacts of having four schools versus uh, five. There are certain educational impacts um, for having a school uh, lower enrollment versus higher enrollment. And then from a project point of view, an individual project, we just want to put it in context too, is what that means for the project that, as we go forward. So I don't know if uh, Joyce, you want to speak to the district-wide Hi, I'm Joyce Usaini, and I'm the Director of Maintenance and Operations, and it's my job to provide a healthy and safe environment for learning. Um, you know, we can talk about the, the four, five versus four um, benefits and, and, and pros and cons, uh, but the reality is the new school building inherently just improves things uh, amazing, dramatically, and the, the biggest impact here is the ability to reach a bigger number of students and to move this town forward to provide those those opportunities for a healthier and safer environment um, to more kids sooner because we all know school building projects have many, many years between them. And if you look at the stock that we have, um, the ability to provide a healthy and clean air. A building like this inherently, pre-COVID even, um, provides basically 100% fresh air in all the classrooms um, that is then conditioned, heated, or cool um, in these large spaces. Architect will correct me if I'm wrong. There's all sorts of occupancy sensors that, that determine, 
you know, how much fresh air needs to be let in so that you're getting that. COVID drove that point home um, at all of our other schools. And really, it's the right thing to do and the healthy thing to do to provide as much fresh air. Um, older schools have unit events, that is a fresh air intake, but optimally, um, you know, you're at best getting 50% fresh air most days just because the temperature, the humidity may not make it conducive to open those vents full. We hit COVID um, and being coming back hybrid and coming back full into this building, there was nothing that needed to be done um, to intervene. No, uh, no additional air purifiers, no additional rules about what you're opening, how long you're opening windows. Um, we met that here. So an opportunity exists by consolidating to be able to provide that to close to 600 students, which is about a quarter of our, or a little over a quarter of our elementary population. Um, the same thing kind of happens with the, the, the healthier finishes. So I look at the, I look at school and I look at what it takes to take care of it. Um, I have a crew of 28 custodians and maintenance people. Um, in all but this building, they spend eight weeks during the summer stripping and waxing floors. They strip and wax them partly because they're final and they wear through. Four of our buildings, three or, three or four of our buildings, um, consist of asbestos-containing tiles for flooring. Nine-inch square tiles. Um, it's a, a um, they're all in great shape. There's no danger to people. We keep them in, in, in you know, tip-top form, but it takes a real effort and a balance. And it does use toxic chemicals, and we can't have kids in the building or in the area. And um, they're also slippery as, as, as you can imagine. You know, the beautiful sight on the first day of school is a shiny new floor until it rains. Um, <laughs> and, uh, or we've seen um, gym programs come in and, and you know, again, polish up the floors and the gyms, and they're too slippery. And we end up having to put additional chemicals on them to reduce that coefficient of friction so that they're safe playing soccer, uh, indoor soccer and things like that. So I look at an opportunity like this, both from a maintenance and cost standpoint, but also from a safety standpoint for the occupants to have good, clean, you know, low toxicity um, air and, and materials. Um, utilities are an interesting thing. Uh, I've been doing a lot, I've been at this job four years, but doing a lot of comparisons um, since this building project came up and really just post high school, but of course COVID also kind of put a slant in the numbers where we weren't open full time. So I went back and compared pre-COVID numbers for this building, 2016, 2017 average, um, to, to now. And even though this is a fully air conditioned building, and those of you who went to Stoughton High, the old building, knew that it wasn't. Um, in 2022, our cost for electricity was only up 2%. Now, it might have been a, a particularly not hot year, but just going back at a number of other years, it, the, the most it increased was 17% for electricity. Um, our oil costs, or uh, sorry, natural gas costs for heating are down 62%. Um, these buildings are just so incredibly efficient. I think we again have an opportunity as we move forward, the buildings are even greener. Um, inherently, new buildings. This is Lee Cole. This is Lee Cole, thank you. <laughs> and really, the, the base design going in would have put us at a level of need anyway, just because that is how we build buildings today. And that's how the NSBA requires us to build buildings today. Um, but a couple of little uh, cost comparisons is that um, you know, the South Building right now uses as much, as much electricity, speed, sorry, as electricity as the Gibbons, which is 43% larger. Um, you know, the, the Jones and the Wilkins are both steam heat buildings, um, and they are incredibly inefficient. The Jones or the Wilkins alone cost more to heat than this brand new high school. So when we talk about replacing buildings, I think that we really have to look at the operational cost long term. The ability to, again, upgrade our stock and benefit our budget um, so that we can provide the money that we're going into education and to educating kids and not into trying to uh, keep old buildings um, Hot. <laughs> and that's about it. I mean, that's a lot of numbers. Uh, you'll see charts as we go on, as time goes on, um, doing some comparisons for the public. But again, the ability to uh, create a building for 215 or 250 kids at a base, or versus 550 designed, 600 uh, really, but by not doubling the size of the building is, is just, again, the cost of building, the cost of everything that goes into a building process. Um, is, is a, a pro for a consolidated building. Mm -hmm.
And Katie, Katie wants to talk about the educational differences. So Mrs. Husseini touched upon a lot of the different considerations, but this decision is, is very near and dear to my heart as principal of the Vulcans right now. Our school will be directly impacted by discussions of going from a five to a four school district. And I think the really important thing to think about is we're talking about the future of elementary education in Stoughton. And when you look at that, it became really inherently obvious at how the students at the Wilkins and the South School have gotten really good, and the staff have gotten really good at making do with what we have. And the fact of the matter is that there are so many things facility-wise that are preventing the staff from giving the best educational opportunity to the students that with the new building we'd be able to hit so many more students. And I think that that's a really important thing to keep in, keep in the back of your mind when you're having these thoughts about, is it the best idea to go from a four, a five to a four school district? I think the special education question that you had earlier also speaks to that. We want to provide opportunities where students can have those pull-up sessions and they are able to have that and that confidentiality that goes with it. We want to be able to offer collaborative spaces for our students to be able to do all that fantastic project-based learning that simply cannot happen as effectively now in the buildings we have as they could in a larger building. Um, I also think that there's opportunities for the community that Right now, with a newer school, we, we would be able to utilize those facilities for events that we just simply can't have right now. I know at the Wilkins, I cannot even offer an assembly to the students because the capacity in our gym is not large enough for my entire school population. So, I mean, there are different things like that, but when you're looking at opportunities for the students in Stoughton, what is best for more kiddos? I think just <clears throat> something to think about is, the community spent a lot of time on this high school to really put high school education on the map, right? Like having a building like this allows you to really do a lot of awesome things. Having an elementary school that also reflects the investment in the high school and what we're doing allows that to continue up all the way for kids, starting in kindergarten all the way through to graduation. And you know, having those capabilities in buildings, like, you know, I'm selfishly, either way, the South School gets better, right? Whether it's a single school replacement or a larger building. So selfishly, I will say, sounds great for, for Principal Monaghan, but for me, it definitely gets better for all the students in the building, which, which is unbelievable. But as a community, we do a lot of things together as elementary school folk. And thinking about like, what are the opportunities for students moving into this new building? Could summer programming be offered at this new elementary school? Could after school be housed at this elementary school? So thinking about those opportunities where it's not just a which kids end up in the district for this building, but how can it really be opened up? Like that's been our pitch all along, is how can the community really benefit from this space? Having a little league field and a soccer field out back that's actually a real field, that benefits the whole community. Having those spaces available to the whole community, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Not to mention that you elevate everyone around you when the building reflects the quality of the staff that's inside of it, right? So right now the buildings do not reflect the quality of the staff and the personnel in Stoughton, and I think that that just elevates everything. It elevates your ELL instruction, your SPED instruction, your regular ed instruction. It's a benefit to, to everyone. So, um, and then, you know, we've talked a lot more about, like, the bigger the building, the more students get impacted. And I think that's the biggest thing at the end of the day, is we want to impact the most students in Stoughton that we can, and this seems to be one of the, the best opportunities to do that. And one final note is that with any new building, it will become the blueprint for any kind of renovations or new building for the future. So that's also something to consider as well, that whatever happens in this new structure will then be echoed as best as can be in the other buildings and minimally in plan for future, for future design. Okay, thank you. Um, one thing we want to add to that discussion um, it is in terms of the project too, we should keep in mind that regardless of, of which option is chosen, the, the class size, the number of uh, students um, per teacher, um, it doesn't change. Uh, so there's still a very good ratio of um, you know, class size of only of limiting it, of designing it for 20 students, whether it, if it's the consolidated school or the, or the smaller school. But the thing, from a project point of view, 
Um, there is an economy of scale that we should consider. There's still just, you know, there's, there's the same size gym. Um, there's still a STEM, you know, one STEM room, there's one art room, one music room, whether it's a smaller school or a larger school. And so and if we think of it as cost per student, um, the cost per student is actually higher for the, for the smaller school. Um, and one of the, the things we wanted to share to put context to this, this chart is a list of all of the, the elementary schools that have been um, approved for construction in the state in the last four years, approved by the, the MSBA, and with the design enrollments for each of those schools, and, and also uh, whether they were consolidated schools or not, not just replacement schools. And, and the surprising thing that we learned is e even the larger enrollment that Stoughton is considering is, is below the average size of, of all these schools. So we shouldn't sort of be afraid that 500 uh, to 600 students it is a large elementary school. It's actually, these days, um, sort of average size. And if we were to do the replacement school at, at a design enrollment of 225, a capacity of maybe even approaching 300, it's still smaller than the smallest school on this list of the last four years. So just to put that in context. Um, and as you mentioned, when we think about the cost per student, there is sort of an economy of scale um, on, on the project level. So we, we did want to share that with you um, as, as we, as the town hopes to get feedback. It's a very important decision, obviously, not just for the South District, but um, redistricting potentially has impact on uh, you know, the entire um, uh, district. So we, we want to get as much information out there as possible to get good feedback. So that's where we are um, and what we wanted to share, but we wanted to get your feedback um, and, and not only just what you've seen today, but also, you know, we are going to have future community meetings. Um, we, we want to focus on topics that are important to, to the community as we look to make these uh, decisions on on the design options, on the enrollment options. So, yes, sir. I was just wondering if it came down to a new building on the lumber set, what the plan would be for the existing South Northwood schools. That, that's actually an open question right now. Um, it's not exactly part of our study as to what should happen there, but it certainly gives the town some opportunities because that, that property is no longer needed, you know, specifically for, for the new elementary school. Um, there's some options there as to what the town might consider. So I, I don't know, I don't think there's anyone from the town who can speak to that just yet uh, in, in that regard. So the, the property itself is under the control of the school committee. They, they would ultimately need to negotiate. Thank you. I can speak to the wilderness because I think that's what's on a lot of people's minds. Is right now our preschool is over at the Jones School. And it is absolutely bustling to see. We have more and more students coming in um, every day. And if you know how preschool works, once a student turns three, uh, particularly if they're a student with disabilities, we need to take them. And so really consolidating going from five elementary schools to four allows the entire district to get better because we can then expand our preschool into the wilderness and, uh, and expand into the wilderness and still use that building. The building is centrally located in town. It allows us to really expand not only preschool, but early childhood in general, as we work with families and help them get prepared. So that would be the plan for the wilderness. For the south, um, not so much. I, I think, you know, the south is just what it is. We have to think about it. I just have a question about that. I know we talked about it previously, but if the wilderness is being determined, that's two not cost effective and one expensive and not cost code for elementary students, why is that then appropriate? So we can still operate the Wilkins. It's not quite as efficient as a new building would be, and it's certainly the next one down. But I think for preschool, the expectations in terms of classroom space is a little bit easier to, to work with preschool students there, and there's, you know, just having smaller kids, and we can, we can spread them out a little bit more at the Wilkins. So we do have those opportunities there. We also have district administration over at the Jones, and so if we did need to spread out a little bit, and we wouldn't, I don't think we'd move the entire thing, but we might be spreading out a little bit and be able to put some district offices in different there. We're all so should we kind of packing. Should the new cost of running the building be increasing? Because you're keeping each building money and building a larger school. 
we would we would have to keep the well fence going. I think the general efficiency. It'd be a lot more efficient and like this school compared to the old high school, it's cheaper to run this school even though it was bigger, um, as Mrs. Hussein said earlier. Um, I think a lot of the conversations would be about ultimately what to do with the Jones. And that would be down the road here in four or five years from now. Any other questions, thoughts? I just had another question. I know you had mentioned class sizes don't change, but if you have a consolidated school that still only has one gym, one cafeteria, art room, mm -hmm. summer room, et cetera, but twice the number of students need to utilize that space, are the specials you have less time in that class or those class sizes several classes? No, it, it works out in, in that range of 500 to 600 students that with the current schedule, that one space, it, it gets utilized a bit more, obviously, uh, full of schedule, but one can still provide the same amount of time for the student in art or music or gym. Uh, it, it does work. The gym is large enough and, and can have a dividing curtain that you can actually have two sessions at once in there. Yeah, and that, that actually yeah. comes down to how the building administrator schedule those special times. And currently, um, the South and the Wilkins, we don't have people that are offering specials well, every single day because we don't have that need because we don't have the enrollment. But when you have a larger enrollment, you would have specialists for all five days and the students would be cycling through each of the specials that they are now. Mm -hmm. And they would still have those and everyone would still, the, the spaces would just get utilized more often. So for example, right now, we don't have the need for physical education two days a week because I simply don't have the enrollment. So Whereas if we, say again? Yeah, yeah, he goes to a different school. Oh, okay. So if we had more students, that gym would then get used all five days in order to cycle through all those classes. So it really just comes down to when you're building your schedule as a principal, how you make sure that each class still gets all of those. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just going to share that, I mean, we don't like to talk about it anywhere. We've been prior to being in Stoke, it's like we've been there our entire lives. But I used to run a 600-person building with one special location, like what would be proposed here, and it's more than enough space. So I think going off of what this is Monaghan is saying, that like with those spaces, you can run a 600-plus student school with this many grade levels, with that many specials, totally effectively not losing out on any time, by also having full-time specialists. I have a split specialist schedule right now, so does Ms. Monaghan, just because we don't have a need for full-time specialists in either of our building. So by being able to do that, you also then have staff that are permanently housed in one location, you have spaces that are dedicated to that one craft daily, right? I mean, you saw the example right now, the South uses a gym two days, two and a half days a week, and then that gym becomes an art room, two and a half days a week, and I have a music room that is used two days a week, and there's a computer room two and a half days a week. I mean, it's, you know, but having dedicated spaces and dedicated staff is absolutely, um, could work in this size school. Well. Anything else? Can, can I, I, there's one thing, I don't want to get up there and do it, but. So this ties into a couple things. One thing that Jay and Katie were talking about, uh, Mr. Dorr and Ms. Monaghan, pardon me, uh, earlier about, they're talking about, you know, potential community uses for the, the, the building. And I, I want to add my own perspective to that because I'm not in the school district uh, administration. Of, I don't think we can spend the kind of money that we'll have to spend for this building and not have it available for community use. I think that would be a, 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 a really poor investment for this community if all we're going to do is make it available to 225 or 515 students 185 days a year. Uh, poor allocation of resources. So, yeah, I hope that there's a big community kick to this project, and I hope there are offshoots to it too. Like, if we do this building, you know, dare I say, the possibility, I don't think we'd be talking about a, South, a new South School and, until we got this building up, because this, this town, frankly, was in a, a, a long period of stagnancy. We hadn't built a new school building since the early 1970s prior to this building. And all of a sudden we have two back to back. Now that's gonna to be tough financially. So this ties into the other question is what do we do with 
you know, one or the other will continue. Dr. Rob talked to you about what his plans for the Wilkins are. Then we'll have, if we build on the line over property, we'll have the Jones School property. But uh, understand how it works. The, by statute, the property is entirely within the jurisdiction of the school committee as long as it's being used for education. So um, if, you know, that, if the, the Jones School is continued, if the use is continued for an educational purpose, well, that's theirs exclusively. We can't even say what to do with it. But I don't think we can pay for it unless we consider, this is me talking, this isn't the committee. I don't think we can pay for it unless we consider things like that. And I also don't think it would be a good allocation of resources if we didn't broaden the scope of why we're building a school in the first place, which is because it benefits everybody and not just 225 or 515 students. It can't. There's got to be more to it. Just like you said. Sorry, Carl. No, that's worthwhile. That's why we're here. Um, Anything further? We, we do um, um, want to mention this. There's a website. That's a QR code. It's also on the board outside um, with uh, frequently asked questions and so we if you think of something later or talking to neighbors or whatever um, um, check that website but also you know feel free to uh, uh, submit um, additional questions and, and we'll continue to add to that and make it a live time this might be a question but um, if the committee goes with me building at the South School and the South School. How are you, how, are, what are going to happen with students? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if that <coughs> option, and anyone else feel free to come in off class, say the wrong thing here, but if that is the option, it will be, in my opinion, challenging. It is not a large site. Um, so that's going to be something that the school committee is going to have to think about when they go through these options. I think that's why we also have a school building committee that makes recommendations, but it would involve, you know, it, it would be longer, it would, it would take long, a longer period of time because there's not an empty school building, which South School will currently um, occupy, would probably involve some, I would assume some modular activity, which probably would be a challenge in and of itself on our site. So I just, because I think it, 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 in high school students, they have a little more economy than... It would definitely be a significant challenge, and I think it would be something for the school it's committee right. to uh, consider if that was the option that they were you, going to You've hit on another criteria that we're going to use to evaluate these options. Disruption, yep. you know, uh, uh, in particular, an addition renovation option is going to require some modular classrooms to free up space to allow construction to happen to the extent that it has to happen. It's not just you know a new coat of paint or some new finishes there. It's going to be significant construction to try to renovate that building. So that, that would certainly be considered. And even building behind it, because of the limited access, that would be very disruptive to the existing school too, just to have construction vehicles on that narrow site accessing the construction zone behind the building. So those are definitely factors that would, that would be Okay. Well, we appreciate your, your attendance here, and um, we're glad it's being recorded and, and can be shared with others who, who aren't here physically, but um, as we say, we will be doing this um, again. Uh, we don't have a specific date yet, but between now and June, there'll probably be two more community forums, uh, so keep an eye out for those. Um, and as I say, um, check out the website and, and submit any, any other questions, too. And of course, all of our meetings our public meetings, building committee meetings, school committee meetings, those are all public meetings too and available for input. So thanks very much. Appreciate it.